Motion to accept the minutes of December 21st. I'll make a motion that we accept the December the 21st uh, minutes for that particular meeting. Have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to accept. The motion to accept the financial report and payment of the bills. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Amendments, no amendments? No, I'm sorry. Okay, Chief. Um, I don't have everybody here right now. Can we, yep. yeah, we can go to the next yeah, we can. topic? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sovereign Trent. Council, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yep, yourself and you. I did, thank you. Grandchild? Oh, it was terrific seeing him. <laughs> good. Little Quinn. <laughs> Very good. You feel real well. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I've i been telling you now for the last couple of months or so that, uh, you know, we've been, we've been working on well number three, so I, I included uh, pictures for you to see the, uh, the work that's been completed at well number three. And uh, I wanted to, I've been promising that to you, so I thought I'd get it to you today. Uh, the work is, 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 is pretty much completed, so I thought it'd be good that you could see that, what would have been done. I have some before pictures in the front, and then, and then of course the uh, upgrades, you can see. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Could you pull that mic up? Yeah. Raise up some. Okay. So the uh, the pictures are self-explanatory. You know, pictures says a thousand words. So mm -hmm. anyway, also included a uh, a sheet from the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture on um, uh, uh, low interest loans, 30, 40 year terms, things like that. Maybe you might want to look at. And we also have a call into MDE uh, to uh, Saeed uh, Kazarai for to see if there's any grant money available uh, that the town may want to uh, use for projects uh, public works projects that type of thing Good. so uh, the um, I'd like to go to the, to the uh, summary list and and, and uh, I wanted to point out a couple things on the uh, summary list that I always talk about with you guys on the uh, about the wastewater treatment plants discharge we um we added a couple things on that list. Uh, Lewis asked me to include a couple things on there that was not on the list prior. And so what we added was, uh, if you look on that list, the effluent quality and permit compliance sheet. We added the uh, average total nitrogen for the month. Uh, and before we were just including the pounds of ac actual pounds accumulative each month which is what the permit's actually based on, the pounds per year that we discharge. But uh, he, Lewis felt that it would be good to see exactly what the average concentration is for the month, the average concentration. So what? So we included that on total nitrogen, you can see it was 1.8 milligrams per liter. And the uh, total phosphorus was uh, point, uh, point zero 0.06, 0 0.06 on that. 
So uh, for now on, when I give you the sheet, I'll show you the uh, concentra actual concentration of total nitrogen and total phosphorus. I think that's a, it's a good idea. Uh, the w one of the highlights, you know, we completed the uh, industrial pretreatment inspections uh, in, in November, and I think we had our last one also in December, and that that was a that's kind of a big item to 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 mention to you. And everything went real well. So every, all the industrial pretreatment uh, industries are looking good. And uh, that's really uh, the main items that I wanted to mention to you. So. Any other questions? About 10? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Lewis, do you have anything? No, I just want to make one comment. Uh, I know that um, Dan brought up the uh, importance of uh, the grease trap maintenance, and we had the program, and I wanted to, uh, the, uh, I had Craig give me a list that they've done so far uh, for grease trap inspection to include Seasons Pizza, 7-Eleven, Loop 40, Chili's Grill and Bar, Dunkin' Donuts, um, Elton Diner, High's Dairy Store, KFC, Taco Bell, Bell Hill, Little Caesars Pizza, McDonald's, uh, both McDonald's restaurants, uh, Pizza Hut, Popeyes, Chicken, Royal Farms, Ruby Tuesdays, Bars, Dairy, Subway, and Waffle House. So, uh, they're doing very well with that to keep up with the inspections and reinspections of those facilities. They have a, a, quite a number of sites. Located in the border, moving on with those inspections. Right. That's all. Not yet? Okay. All right, Chief. I, I apologize, uh, Mayor. Uh, officers were shooting today. They were late getting in, and no, uh, okay. an officer, Lasasa, was going on a call. So that will proceed right along. As I call your name, please stand up. Officer Dancy DeBrosi, as a certified police officer. Uh, came from Baltimore City Police Department. He's been uh, with Baltimore City since 2009. Uh, he was born in the country of Haiti, moved to the United States when he was 15. Presently lives with his family in New Jersey. And uh, he's also a Bantamweight Mixed Martial Arts fighter, currently competing. So, uh, I'm cool with him. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Dennis Vasasa, also a Maryland certified police officer. Comes to us from Baltimore City. He was employed there since 2009. Uh, Lasasa also worked at uh, Ocean City, New Jersey for two summers. Uh, he and his wife uh, both reside in uh, Cecil County. Officer Benjamin Smith, also Maryland certified police officer, comes to us from Baltimore City. He was employed since 2010. And Officer Smith grew up in Elkton, currently resides in Elkton uh, with his wife and daughter. So, uh, now we'll proceed. If you would join me here and there. Raise your right hand. Aye. You swear and affirm that I support the Constitution of the United States. That I will be faithful. Bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of the police officer according to the Constitution and laws of this state.
no business. Uh, my business I'd have. Um, Steve, do you have any more, got an update on it uh, for the uh, recyclable and what no, we've I saved on it? I have it for next week. It's been a while now, see what we, what we saved on that. Okay. All right, do you have anything? Um, the only thing for old business I have is an update on the time set. Uh, center has the problem been addressed they were having uh, when uh, Laura came to talk to us. I'm sorry? The problem with the time center. Did they get it straight now? Is it all taken no, care of? Not, not yet. No. I mean, communication problem with the time center itself. Right. So we haven't got that resolved yet. No. Okay. That's all I had. Yes, I just have one piece of business that uh, I had a phone call from Ken Simmons today and wanted me to ask the board to uh, either update him on where he stands as far as he brought up a presentation of, about the uh, water sprinklers. I told him I'll relay it, bring it up, but he never had a reply after he gave us his presentation. Uh, he, he had a long discussion with me today and he was uh, a little upset because we never got back to him. Um, just want to know where we are because the county did not act on that, but yet we adopted it, assuming that the county was going to adopt it. And when they pulled out, we was left with implementing this, and he had some good concerns, and we never re responded to him on this matter. So um, I just need someone or us to either discuss it and get back with him on that. We've uh, already sent a response to him, given the dates of when we're going to introduce the MB. You're talking about MB Ridge. No, I'm talking about sprinkler systems in general. He came in here and gave us a big presentation. It was sprinkler it systems. Was it. It's been adopted, or, like you said, right? Yeah, it's it's already code. Yeah, it's part of the code. Oh. Well, we already did it. Well, well, could we give him a call and or should he? I'll just have him call you. Sure, I'll tell him it's. Uh, I oh. think he knows it's done. This is it. No, it's just uh, for new business, please. There's nothing but coming in town tonight. There's a light on the corner of Berkeley on South Street on his building there. And it's um, Lincoln. It's getting all blue and flashing blue. I don't think it's going what it's going to do, but it's uh, Is it on the street light? lamps. Huh? Is it Del light? It's one of our street lamps. Right oh, okay. on the corner there. Street, okay, street lamp near Berkeley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to do, but it's all flashing blue. <laughs> That's the only thing I have. Mary Jo, any new business? Um, I just wanted to congratulate Public Works, um, Dan uh, and Max Simpson especially, who was the crew leader at the fixing the North Street wall. Uh, they did a great job, saved the town, the taxpayers a lot of money by doing it on our own, and I just wanted to congratulate all of them. Looks good, huh? Looks yes. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Or a piece of business. Uh, Louis, or could you have someone double check on those signs I called in for Locust Lane, I think, where it was an accident around the corner of Locust Lane in Maine. Um, I'm pretty sure it probably were probably working on it. Just make sure there was a no truck entering sign that was knocked down. And also right up at the high school, there's a sign that's been down for, that might be the, yeah, the county. Yes. Uh, I've notified Kenny, Kenny uh, Bender, the resident maintenance engineer, he said it would be replaced today. I don't know. It was I still down, I saw it. But uh, I've notified them of that and several other signs that don't say that. All right, thank you. Charlie, anything? Lewis, two days ago, uh, basically, I was proceeding through town and I saw some trash sprawled out at um, South and High, and the mayor, I guess, was getting off the of work and I asked him if he had his camera. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I would assume that he sent a picture to you, assuming that once you got that, you would have sent a um, yeah, memo to that address. It, it's um, a corporate an LLC at 205 East Main Street are the owners, and I'll go, I am sending a letter to them. And, and collectively, I don't think we as a board has really given much comment. I mean, I know we've given thought, but not as, as a group about the, um, the uh, substance abuse trend that's 
going up um, in Elkton here. Obviously, there has been a lot of media coverage, and each of us have received a, uh, a letter most recently from Kay Michael, and I just spoke with her briefly uh, last night, and she will be coming in soon. But um, she has some, some concerns which I think are legitimate, and I believe some of our concerns as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lewis, to you, may I ask, um, was there anything done in regard of maybe putting a moratorium on one of the buildings that is now scheduled to open on a part of the town because it does reflect us um, as a board and 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 Elton and 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 specifically. Uh, the answer to your question, no. I'm, I'm not sorry to uh, suspend. Uh, but I thought at one time there was some concern given as far as the planning board may be coming up with some type of documentation, written documentation to halt the efforts of that? Well, I had, I had gone to the county meeting they first had several weeks ago with the public, or actually it was a forum, a public forum, and the next day I had sent that in an email to the board um, requesting we look into our, our ordinance and codes uh, to see what we have written, and I actually came in here to talk to Craig Trossel and Gene Minner about it, and they are, we're looking at different, uh, things in our book right now. I did call Craig though today to get an update on the basics property and where it is and it has been determined by our building and zoning administrator that it is a clinic and clinics require a 40 foot setback and that building right now has a 30 foot setback so therefore they need to attend a board of appeals meeting and at the, uh, the public is welcome at the Board of Appeals meeting, uh, and that will be in February. So right now, it's not anything that we have done to stop it, but because of the codes we have in place right now, uh, that's where that is at. It also requires a variance, too, I think. He told, I talked to Craig today, too. So it's also it's another thing that they have to go through. And even though we're there, I believe at one time they were trying to name it as being a health facility, not necessarily a clinic. Right, doctor's offices. Exactly. Yeah, and actually on the brochure, the company that wants to open there, it does state the word clinic. Uh, and uh, someone had said it in conversation also. So, uh, But I do think we need to look at the town codes and... and do something. I know the county did something last night. I don't think, um, I know we want to make sure everything's legal and, and we don't discriminate against any other uh, facilities, health care facilities coming in, but we do need to look at something. And I think the county at their meeting last night pretty much discussed, discussed some of the same. I'm discussing, you know, uh, the, the fact that you have uh, people coming in from, you know, different areas, different states. There's really not a database or anything like that where, you know, a person could attend, you know, elsewhere, come here, go there, go here. So, you know, they have some of the same concerns as we. Right, right. I did talk to Craig about, too, about the, uh, what they discussed at the county last night and asked him if he could look at that and see if possibility that there's something that we might piggyback off of and we could set up as well somewhat to help us out there. That's it, Mayor. I, I share the same concerns. Um, I just uh, wish um, that uh, we engage in more conversation um, and efforts uh, to find out exactly what we may be able to do or implement in our ordinances uh, to uh, to kind of help direct um, um, these type of uh, 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 facilities further out of town, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I have one concern with that, um, with the facility. It, even if one came uh, and we couldn't stop it, I can't see this uh, surrounding of two, three, four in the same location within uh, three to five mile radius. I don't, I don't understand how we're like the drop zone for that. And as a town of Elkton, um, something should be in place where if there's one, there should be one more someplace else. Not same in the same location right. so i'm really really a little shocked that we've got so many coming all at once but i, I understand that one of the key things if one comes they all can come that's that doesn't have to be and certainly when you got three in, in the radius as you talk it sends a message of negativity 
uh, for this area here. Absolutely. That's correct. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. David Force. Force. I know how I'm supposed to do this. Good evening. Uh, how you doing? State your name. David Fordyce. Uh, I live on Osage Street, right behind American Home and Hardware. Um, you want to sit, you down? sit down? Oh, thank you. Um, I only recently became aware of the plan to put in four uh, meth clinics, one at Basics. I am here to tell you that in my neighborhood that I get to live with every day, um, there the drug trafficking has been increasing. We have problems with prostitution in the neighborhood. We have problems with a lot of trash in the neighborhood. We have problems with open drinking at 8.30 in the morning on the retaining wall across from my front door. Um, I rise in the strongest opposition to any, repeat, any methadone clinics. Or we already got one on Landing Lane. I don't want that one there. Um, <clears throat> My property values since we moved here in 2005 have dropped, and they're going to drop a lot more if you put in a methadone clinic and basics right there. Property values will drop, crime will increase because it's not only going to be the people getting treatment, it's going to be the people trying to get the drugs from the people walking in the door. It's going to be increased prostitution. I uh, have talked with a couple of business leaders. One is ready to close up doors and leave Elkton. You've got to be concerned about your tax base. Uh, I do know of a second one that did close up their doors just before the New Year's. So I implore you, please, you know, put together a, a, a new ordinance. Um, I was unable to attend the county meeting last night, uh, but I did talk with someone today about what happened at the county meeting, and one of the uh, stipulations of the ordinance that they put forward is that if you have 500 patients visiting facility, you have to have 500 parking spaces. So, so maybe you guys should piggyback off of what they're doing. And, uh, you know, this is not good for Elkton. And I don't, when we moved here, we thought, oh, this is a great town. It's great Americana. You know, it had a lot of the same appeal to me that Northeast does. Um, I really hate to see this go down the tubes. That, that, that's, that's what I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew? No. <coughs> Andrew Yodelbauer, 901 Lassie Highway, Elton. Uh, I too am in uh, opposition of methadone clinics and, and uh, you asked the question, uh, Commissioner Piner, you know, why? Well, if there's one here, there shouldn't be one here. I've been down this road for the last four months um, uh, of uh, trying to voice my opposition uh, to the county. Um, I have to say this refreshing sitting here tonight listening that I have five people that sound like they're in agreement. I haven't been working with that here in the last couple of months. <laughs> so um, we all know that it's bad. But to answer your question, uh, why? Um, we are left as a community, whether it be the county and out here in the town and all the rest of the uh, uh, towns in Cecil County, in my opinion, and it's just my humble opinion, we have to do the job of the state. The state has no regulations as to where these can go. We can line them up one right next to a 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 next. There's no type of regulation at the state level. It would make sense that you would say, hey, if the state is regulating and licensing a business with another per with, with, with a third party, that they would take steps to say we need a certain type of facility, meaning the structure itself, um, and where these places would be located. Uh, it's been my argument that uh, if the state is going to uh, uh, go about it this way, that they're in a joint venture, that the state is also as liable as the operator if something was to go wrong. I can give you piles and piles of research that I've done as to how methadone works, and but I'm not going to get into all that, but what I will get into is that, and is what I was imploring with the county commissioners was we need smart planning and zoning because people don't understand the sheer volume. I spoke with the operators of the Elkton Treatment Center, 
They see 516 people a day, six days a week. I testified, or I testified, I spoke, excuse me, in front of uh, the county commissioners, and I did a little traffic count myself. I don't know the square footage of the building down here at the Oakland Treatment Center, but I would not imagine it can be more than 7,000 square feet. I don't know, so I'm not going to say it's exactly this, but I can give you these numbers. I have a building in the town of Elkton that's 27,000 square feet. I got 33 parking places. In the month of November, one of the busiest shopping months of the year, we saw in our business, which is open seven days a week from 10 in the morning to 9 at night. The methadone people from Elkton Treatment Center told me they do the bulk of their business from 6 in the morning to 10 in the morning. 500 people, 516 people. Being open every day except for Thanksgiving in November from 10 in the morning to 9 at night, I saw 318 people in the whole month of November. You're talking about seeing 516 people per day. We need smart planning and zoning whether it be a methadone clinic, whether it be a wonderful pain management clinic. Unfortunately, we see what's going on with abortion clinic. We got issues and it starts with planning and zoning. We're not going to be able to change what the state does. The state says, this is how we're treating drug addiction. I, my personal opinion, which really doesn't make any difference, methadone is not the way to kick a drug habit, but the state of Maryland says that it is. I've spoken uh, at length in email and in person with Dr. Cohen, who was the leader of the methadone uh, program for the state of Maryland. They're going with methadone. The problem is there is a gold rush on Cecil County because Cecil County does not have their ordinances in place. Hartford County does, Baltimore County does, Baltimore City does, everybody else does. Now all of a sudden, if you're seeing 516 people a day, six days a week, a lot of money, a lot of money. And it's guaranteed money, Medicaid money. I'm trying to sell somebody a sofa and get them to pay for it in Medicaid, but I can't seem to get that pushed through. <laughs> so it is a serious, 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 serious issue. And I'm overjoyed to hear everybody say, hey, we got a problem here. This is not about not helping our fellow man not helping people in need. That's not what this is about. This is about smart planning and zoning. We all live in this community. We all work in this community. We all have businesses or some type of an investment in this community. And we need to work together to solve the problem. I'm not trying to bash the county or this and that, but my goodness gracious, it was horrible trying to get some kind of a unity to say, hey, we've got an issue that we need to look at in a smart, responsible way and say, hey, this is what we need to do. We all live with the restrictions. The restrictions or the uh, uh, ordinance that was passed last night for the county is less restrictive than a liquor store. A liquor store. I made the statement last night at the county meeting that I can go into a liquor store in the state of, or in the in, in Cecil County. I can buy a legal product of alcohol. I am by law not permitted to consume it on the premises. I must get in my car and drive away and consume it someplace else. I am allowed by law, if I have an addiction problem, go to a state licensed and uh, 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 methadone clinic. I must by law, I must by law consume the methadone on the premises. And I must leave after I have received my methadone. Methadone is five times more addictive than heroin. Now, my position out on Route 40 where they wanted to put one out there was, I'm right across the street seeing 318 people a month and you're seeing 516 people in four hours who just got methadone? Smart planning and zoning, responsible. Responsible planning and zoning. Who's gonna think that before all this gold rush comes here that we need to think about methadone? Nobody. We all live in a nice world, a nice community. We're all straightforward, you know, thinking people and this and that, you never would have thought that. Between pain management clinics, they're all started, dotted around here and there. The state needs to start to really regulate this too. They've got pain management people who own pain management places owning methadone clinics. That's craziness. Craziness. I made the statement that if I had, if I could get somebody addicted to recliners and they had to buy one every day, <laughs> 
I'll be feeling pretty good about myself, I can tell you. So, um, but anyway, thank you for your time. And, and uh, if anybody needs anything or whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to help and, and, and willing to do it. We need to do it now um, uh, because it's not going to stop because there's no, I thought that too. When they're like, they're not gonna put a methadone clinic over there because there's one right downtown. Yeah. No, they put them anywhere, they, there's no regulations on it at all. So thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. That's right. Andy. Hi, Candy mm -hmm. Dazaveda, Five River Road in Elkton. Um, Read the paper today, Elkton struggles to reverse perception of decline. It's not a perception. It's a reality. It's a fact. Elkton has a lot of troubles. We continue to decline and we continue to go downhill. Another methadone treatment center or pain management clinic, etc., will only make the problem worse. Um, for all of you tonight, I was at the county meeting last night. And I have copies of you'd like would you like to see what the county has? That was the, the typed copy before the meeting. They passed that ordinance. Um, with the exception of parking because Clara Campbell had recommended, if you read the bottom line, off-street parking requirements, it's now that the clinic shall provide one off-street parking space for the maximum capacity. It wasn't clear to me last night whether they mean maximum capacity of the fire marshal or the total maximum capacity that the clinic can hold. But it's going to be a lot more parking spaces than it's down here at the Elkton. Um, <clears throat> Cecil County and Foremost Elkton have a unique situation with our close proximity to Delaware, Pennsylvania, and I-95, and unfortunately we've become a dumping ground for undesirables. It's common knowledge that Delaware brings their homeless here, and as an Elkton area native, I'm extremely distraught over the deterioration of our town over the past 10 years. I find it almost impossible to find a decent tenant. I can no longer walk the street safely as we're plagued with crime and our small town charm has vanished. I understand our county has a drug problem, but Elkton already has a methadone clinic and we are serving far more than our community with this clinic. My office is one block from the current methadone clinic and the traffic, cars, pedestrians, prostitution and loitering is tremendous. How could we cluster a second and now even a third methadone clinic in our small town truly serving anyone but the owners of the clinic? looking to profit from such a travesty. Steering and clustering of methadone clinics is in one isolated several mile area should not be allowed and will only contribute to more drug shopping. The clinics are for profit, but the town has a duty to protect the health and welfare of all of its residents. The small town of Elkton should not bear all of the burden for the drug problems of Cecil County and the surrounding tri-state areas. We're one small town already plagued with problems. Please help be a part of the solution and do not allow clinics to cluster here. With proper planning and zoning, you could be proactive instead of reactive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as you all heard, uh, we're all uh, have the same feelings and we've already talked with our planning people and um, we are looking into it and seeing what we can come up with and uh, we'll deal with it. And I, you're all right. I think we all agree that we don't need another one. But that's why I think so. <coughs> we'll look into it and see what we can come up with. Okay, anybody else have anything? I'll close. call a closed meeting. Take us about 10, meeting, 10 minutes to uh, discuss personnel. <laughs> okay. Can I say something before we close the meeting? I just want to say one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Michelle, is our next workshop, do you know what is on the agenda right now? Two items. Could we possibly schedule uh, Jean and Craig to be with us so we could discuss this mm -hmm. right away and get that started? And maybe they come up with some ideas we could look at, and, and of course, Norman also. 
Of course, also, it would be nice in the future, or I don't know how soon, to have some type of an alliance with the, uh, with the county, because it affects us all. I just want to make one more comment. Uh, when we was dealing with BRAC, um, it was a big thing with the county making sure that we had um, relocatable reloc location for BRAC citizens and looking for a nice place to live. And this was a, a prime spot for us. You know, there wasn't all this that we're talking about now, drug clinics and, and methadone clinics and everything. And it, it kind of bothers me to see that we have no control over what the county's given us to do and put in our place where when we had that dialogue before about BRAC uh, people moving down here, it's it's like we don't have that communication like Mr. Gibbons, Commissioner Gibbons said. We need to have a dialogue with them and be able to talk about this before we get hit at the last minute and then we don't have nothing in the books for it because I had no clue this was even coming to the town building. So just sharing that. You want to make a motion to that? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. You have a second for that? Second. And all those in favor? I'm trying to get your attention. Do you know the day of the variance meeting in February? I, I tried looking it up online and it wasn't posted. I don't believe it yet. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Let's see if that answer. Did you get that answer real quick for him? We don't have any calendars. We don't have any calendars. Well, oh, she's going to get it anyway. But. That's all right. Um, February the 16th. February the 16th. February the 16th. 16th. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. yeah. I have a motion and a second. Here. Here. Come forward for closed meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks for coming. We will not be reconvening. Thank you.